And here we are, the most exciting set of news on crypto derivatives I have done. This has been a hell of a time. Uh, please like, please comment and subscribe to this channel. Please look at the links below. They will save you some money and you can find some free money there. So, God, what has happened? Uh, this thread just starts on the 12th of March when the massive Bitcoin dump has happened and it will end on the 25th of March. So what has happened? We have essentially just ridden down pretty much in a straight line from over 10K to 3,600. What a bloody ride. And this has been a meltdown of Bitcoin derivatives. Um, my understanding is that the true price of Bitcoin has been slightly lower than that. So probably it was around maybe 7, 8K, maybe 6 to 8K. But because people have bought so much derivatives, the price has been artificially pushed to around 10 or, or above 10K. And because... Um, and that price has been there artificially uh, selling all these derivatives and lack of liquidity on the buy side have caused all this to collapse in an uncontrolled fashion and that's why we have dumped to 3.5 well 3.6k anyway let's go through through all the news um, so yeah maybe i'll just share some more thoughts so this massive dump to 3.6k I, I don't think we're coming back there uh, maybe we are at some point but um, it, it was just the derivatives getting the leveraged and nobody intended to sell spot at 3.6k. It was just the automatic selling engine selling all the derivatives. And, and that's what caused all this. There were massive, massive discounts. It was really easy to buy a lot of September futures at 3.6, sorry, 3.3k on BitMEX. Um, but the engine has been o o overloaded, didn't accept um, orders. Uh, so it was difficult to buy these, but it was totally possible. Like I bought some of these. Um, so yeah, if you were a seller of daily Bitcoin and Ethereum put options, you have been royally screwed um, or, you know, just unlucky. Um, well, alert. So here we go. The, the massive uh, dump in in the legacy markets uh, so um, stocks going down a lot and here is the fed introducing half a trillion of daily repos um, these have been increased to one trillion a day later on um, and here we go this is the 25 percent dip in the um, stocks and that has just precipitated everything um, so it was a dollar funding crisis and um, i believe that this massive dump uh, in stocks has precipitated shortage of dollars and then everything has gone down against dollar because people were just starved out of dollars they had to repay some of the loans uh, they had to refinance some of the leveraged positions um, so because dollar has become so scarce, everything else has gone down because people were just rushing to get some dollars. So the government has been obliged to destroy. So because dollar has destroyed everything, government is now obliged to, to destroy dollar. Government is has a mandate to make sure dollar stays more or less the same against all the other assets. And the government will do whatever needed to keep that that kind of stable price level even if it involves printing a lot of money out of thin air okay um so it's it's a bit out of context but around this time um we are after the big dip i think and and this is how how crypto looks like there was absolutely nothing to retweet like nobody has been um active on on crypto twitter uh, so this is how how it looked like like everyone has been destroyed and you know just some, some flames right there and then you just look at all the discounts on all the futures on on all the uh, swaps you guys like all the gamblers everyone who had any leverage positions you guys are so 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 wrecked <laughs> nobody liked this one <laughs> Here we are at 4.7k 
um, so the so um, this will be a more interesting one, and we'll come back to this. Uh, but uh, here I was just saying that um, liquidity assignment and backstop liquidity provision contracts need to be cleared, and then we can pump. So a lot of liquidity providers have um, have been obliged to buy if uh, if the price goes down a lot or sell if the price goes up a lot. Um, so if there is a contract uh, ending termination or something and there is no liquidity in the order book, these guys are obliged to take the other side of the trade no matter what the price is. And these guys were forced to buy uh, when the price was so low and the order book has been empty. And after they have bought they got a lot of notifications, some of them woke up, some of them had automated systems, and these systems were forced to sell. Now, usually, if you are a liquidity provider, if you are forced to sell, you obviously sell um, at a profitable price. And usually the price stays the same or goes up. In this setting, they were forced uh, to buy, and then the price continued to go down. So they were just exiting the market at any price no matter whether they were in, in huge losses or, or break even or whatever. So participating in these programs is supposed to be profitable because uh, the, you buy at a reduced price. It's like being the liquidation engine on BitMEX, like you're supposed to make money most of the time. This time they didn't. So they were just forced to buy and then because they want to stay delta neutral, they were just selling whatever they bought. And this is um, description uh, which we've got. So that's 3 a.m. Um, the London time. No, no, it, it's actually 2 a.m. London time. No, it is 3 a.m. Yeah, and Bit Bitmex has uh, released this statement um, saying that the requests were delayed. So we know that there has been a um, dedicated um, DDoS attack at that point, so maybe this entire dump has been engineered. Um, anyway, this has caused BitMEX to have 100% CPU usage, and this is why the orders have been so delayed. And this is that sweet buy of uh, BitMEX futures September for 3.3k. Like, if you bought some here, if you could. Um, even when this has all pumped up, there was some access. I did manage to execute some market buys here at 3.3k and then left some waiting here and, and got hit again. Um, so yeah, it was possible to execute trades, but you would have to be close to the uh, to their server. Um, so yeah, minor glitch. So essentially it was a massive liquidation. I believe the liquidation engine has already had some contracts here and then it just went down and liquidated further. So from 4.5k it just went down and uh, the index went down to around 3.8k or 3.6 maybe at some point, but uh, no 3.8, but the BitMEX swap price just went to 3.6. Well, maybe it was a, a, an engineered thing. Maybe it was um, BitMEX flipping some switches. That's the insane theory from uh, SBF uh, Alameda. The, he's the guy who runs FTX. Um, so he just makes a theory why it would be uh, reasonable for BitMEX just to pull the plug and not allow the liquidations to just keep pushing the price down. Um, I think that that's not true. I think, uh, well, I kind of believe that there was a DDoS attack. Maybe it was a DDoS to keep the Bitcoin up. Maybe it was a DDoS to prevent the price from dropping. Nobody will ever know, really. Um, Cyber, he's a size trader. He got a message from a friend that trades with that uh, from a friend that trades with serious size. He said that this will be known as the biggest shakeout in BTC history, and I I agree. Right, the boot has mentioned something really, um, really good. So, because of the way the BitMEX XBT USD swap is structured, when you and and I think it's just reasonable to refer to that uh, post of mine, uh, which shows that massive dump. Um, it's really profitable to buy swap when it's massively discounted versus 
the um, versus the spot versus the mark price it gives you an entry which is a killer entry and it allows you to have a very very um, high reward low risk trade and um, so let me just find that post of mine um, that's March 15 so here we go it should be around here so yeah um, at this point oh that's 4k is the other one so at this point the spot well I, I was tweeting it about here like this period of time has been really short and the engine has been slow but here it, it, it was totally good so the bitmex swap has been around 4.7k but the um, the spot price was 5.2 so the price has been marked to 5.2 you could go 100x at 5 point uh, with the spot at 5.2 but you are buying at 4.7 so your position has been marked to 5.2 but what you paid was 4.7 so until the price drops to 4.7 and liquidates you at that point you're good and if the price never returns you're good the price has gone down to 4.4k afterwards actually um so uh, but but you had an opportunity to sell over 6k uh, so it was a massive uh, opportunity i wish i had more liquidity available you could just all open 10 bitmex accounts or just use 10 accounts if you have 10 and um, and then go 100x on the lowest um risk level with uh, well at 200 bitcoin risk level um, I, I wish i had funds not tied up uh, in in other places um, but yeah that that was the the trade of the century probably um i don't think that there will be a, another better trade on crypto derivatives available in this size like you could certainly open 10 10 accounts and go 200x sorry 100x on 200 bitcoins each and if if only i could i would do that but i couldn't i couldn't know uh, fund 10 accounts so quickly um so i said that this opportunity has been kind of archer smiling to us and giving us a ticket to the moon pretty much for free like that risk and reward has been absolutely awesome and that's because that the exchange has been designed like this um so the the swap encourages people to go long and if there is such a massive discount people are very 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 encouraged to go long and that was around two uh, around 20 btc if you went 100x um with 200 btc because the discount has been around 10 percent so 20 bitcoins you make it immediately after you enter the trade that was pretty massive so 10 percent of whatever you open um fine so yeah so i went 100x uh with with my share um uh, the important bit is uh when you when you go long in these conditions i don't think you'll ever see these conditions again but when you long and uh, you need to keep buying above your liquidation price because apparently bitmex doesn't like you opening doesn't like you buying below your liquidation price um yeah uh, it, it, it makes some sense uh, but it will make more sense if if you are in in that position to all those a-holes saying bitmex insurance fund is too big i want a piece or i want lower fees and smaller fund or i want money that is not mine to be managed differently uh, this this big event is what the insurance fund uh, has been designed for it has played a huge role and maybe saved us from 1k btc it i mean one btc has been entirely possible um it's just a cascade which doesn't stop until the circle is broken and maybe that ddos attack has stopped the circle it's hard to tell but the bitmex insurance fund has allowed bitmex to be the biggest cryptocurrency derivatives long long actor in the whole space they went long a lot they went long maybe around well, I, I think i've made some some guesstimates uh, higher up but hundreds millions of dollars so they have been long with their insurance fund hundreds millions of dollars while you guys have been wrecked and forced to sell so you know thumbs up to them 
for having such a big insurance fund. If if the insurance fund has been smaller, you guys would be auto deleveraged, or some people would be auto deleveraged, and and some um, traders uh, would be forced to buy, which would be good, but you could be forced to buy at 4.4k and then liquidate at 36 so although everyone wants to be liquidate well to be out of the leverage at the very bottom it's not how it usually happens and so that was what i was waiting for it's an important moment for me and when the 10 million liquidations are finished this has been taking ages and as, as you can see the liquidation engine has been full from around here to way beyond that it's been going on for hours and to me that's a that's a big event like when there is a 10 million sell above in the order book the price is discouraged from spiking up too quickly so i like to wait until the 10 million liquidations are finished and um yeah that's that, that's my message doom officially over apologies for the inconvenience btc is back in business oh well and then I wished good luck to everyone who went 100 100x, 10% below the mark price. Um, that's another post. You might already know this, but cash and carry has closed. So all the arbitragers have sold spot and bought discounted derivatives. Now, when derivatives go back into Contango, and this is where they are heading now, we're pretty much near Contango, some will sell derivatives and they will buy spot and derivatives don't move bitcoin price spot transactions do so this massive deleverage in in bitcoin has been pushing the price down and then just got decoupled uh, from from the spot price um, and that's because the arbitrageurs were just running out of funds and, and they were not able to arbitrage the price enough um, so the price has been dropping because people were um, selling spot and buying derivatives and they were just arbitraging everything to the spot now this is a funny thought imagine being a 55 year old finance guy paying three full-time guys to run fancy simulations and back tests just to hear computer says that ethereum down 50 percent in one day and btc down 40 percent in one day is impossible whenever it dies 30 percent a day sell shit loads of puts as it cannot go lower well, it went down a lot lower, and I'm sure this this well some si similar version of this story has happened. Here, Bitmex is fighting back uh, against Alameda's um, accusations. So Bitmex says there is no conceivable reason why a platform like Bitmex, which has been operated for over five years and counting, would lower itself to the degree you propose to avoid situation for which it is already prepared. And I totally agree. Bitmex is really prepared for price going down much lower. Um, and this is what has happened. I believe this is a piece of art. You will never see anything like this again, I think. Um, it could have been much longer, uh, but essentially this is the dump to 3.6k. This is all the volatility, all the mm, orders that were delayed. Um, and then the massive, massive discount on swap. You will never see such a discount on swap i believe and and if we see such as well i, I really wish we do see and i am prepared now um, but i don't think it's happening and um, a gentle reminder at that point march 13th if you expect a further cascade of liquidations to zero we just went from 800 million open interest to 400 million and and this is um what platform is that that is, uh, oh, I forgot the name, um, Tensor Charts, yeah. So we went from 800 million open interest here to 400 million. Like if you're expecting a cascade of liquidations to zero, sorry, there's nothing left to liquidate. <laughs> Large part of the longs are guys who sold spot and bought derivatives. They don't have a liquidation price. They will just keep arbitrage and they will keep repositioning you will not be able to liquidate them. It's it's impossible. Um, Two billion of smooth trading, even during the biggest crypto storm. So yeah, a lot of exchanges went belly up. Deribit even has stopped. Um, I think general user interface has stopped working for them for a short while. Bitfinex has been up and they have traded two billion. 
not a, not a shabby number. Short sales were banned. Uh, Deutsche Bank uh, ways possible sort a short selling ban. South Korea to ban stock short selling for six months. Um, just a reminder: Federal Reserve just printed five hundred billion. That's half a trillion. Uh, Bank of China eighty billion. European Union forty billion. South Korea ten billion. Bank of Japan two billion. Britain forty billion. Italy eight point four billion. Everyone is printing money. That's the only thing they can do uh, against such a crisis. Um, fine. Let's continue. Um, Volatility has absolutely exploded. This is where the volatility has been and has exploded. Um, option sellers uh, have taken so much risk uh, that that risk is just offloading uh, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow morning on Friday. So I think the implied volatility will go down as option sellers will be able to take more risk. But some of the option sellers are never coming back. They're gone for good, unfortunately. Um, what happened um, has not been kind on people using uh, option pricing models because no option pricing models would have predicted what has happened and if you are based on models you are royally screwed so yesterday's move was 10 standard deviations event versus what was priced in 10 standard deviations 10 in normal distribution modeling this cannot happen, like 0% cannot happen, can't. And a lot of people were betting large amounts of money for this not to happen, and it has happened, and just wiped out people selling options. Imagine thinking money solves the problem caused by printing money. Yeah, what we are seeing with the leverage is, is the problem with you know, being over leveraged, and by printing more money, you are just leveraging leveraging up more this is our current crisis versus 2008 we have dumped 25 percent in 16 days while the 2008-9 crisis has been mm, going on for a year so it's way way faster this is a um, picture which speaks a thousand words year-on-year -year change in diners and this is the coronavirus um, outbreak so this is just a a response. Um, they were debating the insurance fund, um, some entries, and and apparently the insurance fund has been uh, staring at the void. Apparently the insurance fund, at the worst moment, it was at five thousand bitcoin loss, which is not too bad for its current size. It's it's tens of thousands of bitcoins. Um, anyway, they are saying that there could have been big consequences of insurance fund um, losing this this bet, so kind of getting liquidated. Well, it it, it is kind of possible. So if the if the insurance fund is supposed to get liquidated, it just loses all the money. It gives it to people who uh, have made some profits, and auto deleverages everyone. Um, so by liquidating insurance fund, I mean that people who are short are auto deleveraged and are forced to buy. If at any point in time insurance fund is all to the leveraged, so if, if you liquidate the BitMEX insurance fund, I would do everything I could to be on the other side of this trade and to be all to the leveraged and, and to change the direction because that would be a big, big event. And I'm pretty sure that if you liquidate the insurance fund, the price is going to change the direction immediately. Maybe this will happen on the way up. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I was just saying that you know, with auto leverage, they are, the BitMEX is is really uh, well prepared for all this. Um, so mud gains would go to shorters rather than to the insurance fund. So it would go to the people. A good point by um, Flood. Um, it's funny when people talk about BitMEX hating Bitcoin, the BitMEX wanting Bitcoin to go down at 3.9k or wherever the bottom was, BitMEX was undoubtedly the biggest bull not by choice due to the sheer amount of long swaps they inherited from traders who had been liquidated. Yeah, absolutely, they went long so much. And my guess 
was around three to four hundred million, maybe a little bit outside, maybe two hundred to four hundred million, but it was absolutely massive. <laughs> Flippening. Um, the amount of ETH futures used to be biggest on BitMEX. BitMEX has been um, really huge about ETH futures. Their product was really popular. After all the liquidations, they're not so big anymore. Even apparently Bybit, which I believe that that's, that's all, all fake, I think. Uh, but Deribit and FTX, that's genuine. So, you know, that's, that's a real flippening. Um, here, swap above spot. Um, positive rates and contango. Normal market conditions are back. Well, I was a bit too quick with that. When no longer profitable to go long derivatives, many people and firms will sell them and buy spot. When you sell 100 million on BitMEX, nothing really happens, and that's true. But magic happens when you buy 100 million on spot BTC. Yeah, spot moves the price. It's not the swap. Swap initiates quick moves, and, and uh, swap matters in short term. When you're talking long term, it's, it's spot. Um, it requires to buy 6,000 Bitcoins to move the price up 10% on major exchanges. That's around 30 million. That's like spare change for some billionaires. There are loads of options with strikes above 5k that will require sellers to buy BTC to rebalance. BTC can rip to 10k in an instant. And it's just too bad that the call options are expensive and you know betting on that is, is, is pricey. Uh, Bitfinex absolutely slaying it. They have burned like seven hundred thousand dollars worth of of Leo, almost a million dollars worth of Leo in one day. Well, so they have burned almost two percent of the supply. I think that when they burn sixty percent of the supply, the valuation would be absolutely crazy, because there wouldn't be much left. That's that's a good one. Um, here here he just says that. They just fiddle with the numbers in, in, in the computer and, you know, it's, it's not money from taxes. Uh, so the question is, where did the Federal Reserve get the 1.5 trillion committed to injection? So that's not tax money. Where do you get this money from? We just input them in the computer and it just appears. Yeah, so a good explanation how it works. So another tweet of mine. Uh, some of those below uh, were forced to sell. They still love crypto and they have to earn and rebuy to rebuild their stacks and that's option sellers absolutely wrecked liquidity providers absolutely wrecked market makers absolutely wrecked liquidation assignment program absolutely wrecked miners wrecked usd die borrowers with liquidated btc and eth collateral like these were liquidated at zero some of them uh, absolutely wrecked quant traders wrecked because their computers just learned on the wrong um wrong basis and gamblers sorry if you've been a gambler i, I, I bet you're wrecked or or badly damaged and people didn't talk about this uh, and deribit did a very good pr job um so deribit incurred a large losses um of 700 btc um Deribit is faster than BitMEX, but it allows negative balances, and that's what we had on this dump. Liquidation engine was forced to sell. It was not allowed to hold like BitMEX. If not for injecting 500 Bitcoin into the insurance fund, it would have gone from 400 to minus 300, and everyone in profit would have to pay. It's a socialized loss. It would be a clawback. Um, so it's, it's, it's very well done for Deribit. Every trader that has made profit on Deribit is forced to contribute to cover for 300 Bitcoin losses. That would have been a big headline. And that was a good decision to spend around 1.5 to $2 million covering for the loss. And now they have a perfect track record and they never had to do a clawback. And, you know, that, that's good. But this event has really happened and it just exposes that people on Deribit are at higher risk than people at BitMEX, and the risk is real. Alistair Milne saying people at the moment are in extreme fear. Yesterday, extreme fear. Um, last week, extreme fear. That's a good time to buy. Uh, someone has left a comment similar to won't go long till the needle's pegged about the previous tweet. So not good enough. I want a better buy. So that's just why you need to buy. 8K to 3.6 in 24 hours. 
102 million BTC liquidations within a few hours. Persistent 1% per 8 hours funding paying ETH longs. Maxed out XBT USD trading, uh, sorry, funding for days, and that's 1% daily. September futures at 3. Point, well, actually, it was 3.3 most of the time, just dipped to 3.2 a, a few times. 57 days till miners half their selling and shitloads of coal with strikes above the spot because these these calls they are still there so whoever sold them had to sell spot because the risk of these call options being in the money in the future is now very low but as the price goes up they will be forced to buy um, and th that's just how you price uh, your your options exposure that's just the model that's the model which has wrecked them on the way down and this same model can wreck them on the way up back above 10k and um, that is a thread um, so it's very possible for stocks to go down the government has mandated everything to prevent that with money printing i'm not blindfolded bull but i strongly believe btc will break for a uh, 40k one day and the price now is so low that I can afford to keep buying Bitcoin below 3K pretty much in perpetuity. So that's my working, that's what I'm working from. Bitcoin will go up and if it goes down below 3K, I can just keep buying. So this is my kind of more or less buy area. So I have my baseline exposure and some extra funds and I can just um, deploy these funds mainly for BTC. BTC is my main target. So I can burn all these extra fun, uh, funds down to 3K. And from 3K, I can just keep buying on the monthly basis or whatever. Um, uh, so I have my moon target and I still believe no matter how low it will go, I still believe it will go to 40K. So with this plan, the worst possible outcome is to be leveraged long, get shaken out on a dip and miss cheap BTC buy opportunity and then miss the moon waiting for a dip. So as the price goes down, my primary goal is just to keep buying. Um, you just have to buy. So there's no other scenario that is as bad as this. Um, the scenario where the Bitcoin goes to zero is, is still okay, because at zero I have plenty of buying, um, of, of, of buying power, because I'm still sure it will go to 40k. So there's no other scenario as bad as getting shaken out at the bottom and then the price skyrocketing up. Um, unfortunately, this has happened to a lot of you, to a lot of crypto gamblers. Uh, you love BTC, you are long, you are forced to close at a very low price. Since then, we've departed from 3K and it is likely that you will never have a chance to rebuy at 3 or 4K. Now back to macro perspective, stocks have a very good reason to go down. Stocks went down and reduced valuation of everything with margin calls and discounts and everything. The USD went up and I see current macro stage as USD shortage more than a stock crash. The stock crash has precipitated it all. Government promised to print a lot of money and it will do it and it will print more than it has promised on the 15th of March. They are good until the confidence in USD is lost and we are nowhere near, um, near that. Stocks may go up or down but they will have a tailwind from the quantitative easing. That tailwind will just keep, keep pushing the price up and the same tailwind will be pushing all assets, including Bitcoin and crypto. I don't care about the correlations. In my view, BTC and maybe ETH are killer assets because of their utility and limited supply. How can you correlate these with anything else on the planet? They are so unique. Bitcoin has been designed in a crisis like this to shine in conditions like this. And there we are, crisis being fixed with helicopter money combined with Bitcoin halvening and a low price. Can you ask for a more positive scenario, really? BTC may go down if holders uh, get margin calls or or get some great buy opportunities elsewhere but i'm not a fan of this theory bitcoin may go down if leverage longers scooping 4k btc get wrecked and you know they, they didn't get wrecked and i think we are beyond this point but it's a crazy asset it may crash for, an, for any reason but i like the bull theory more so i've been banging on for 34 minutes i think i'll stop here and I will take on with the next episode after that. Please like, please comment and subscribe and look at the links below. Thanks for watching.